Katie, how are you doing? Um, hey, how's it going? Just uh, looking ahead to the fight. Um, this must bring back memories of where it all began, I suppose, back in London. And have you had the time, have you had the chance this week to think about the journey, I suppose, and what you did in London um, <sighs> where you are now? I suppose just how it's come full circle almost. Have you time to reflect on that or is that for another day? Um, yeah, I guess I've been asked a lot of questions about that this week, um, about that fight in London and um, it's kind of has forced me, I guess, to look back on it. And it was obviously such a, a great moment for me. I can't really remember much from, from the fight, to, to be quite honest. Um, but I do just remember the the atmosphere from that fight. And the Irish fans can proudly say that they broke the decibel levels in, in, that, in the arena that day. It was just a fantastic week for me, uh, personally, of the achieving a childhood dream. I would have had no idea that nine years later we, we, we will be facing each other again in the pro ring. Uh, but here we are. Um, we obviously have great history together as amateurs and um, and we're, we're facing each other again in the pro ring uh, for the first time on Saturday night. So it's very, very exciting. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we go to Gav Casey next, please. Hi, Katie. Hope you're well. Hey, Gavin. How's it going? Um, I think, good, thanks. Good, thanks. I think uh, off the top of my head, it'll be the first time you'd be facing a southpaw as a professional. So it's been a while now. In At the same time, you would have been preparing for Amanda Serrano at a point last year. I know you did some work with Andy Lee, for example, I think sparring in order to prepare for a, a lefty at the time. So I'm just wondering how has that affected or changed your preparation in advance of this fight? Um, my preparation hasn't really changed much from, from fight to fight. Obviously, the sparring partner has changed. That's, that's the only part that actually changes during the training camp. Um, so I've had some uh, sand and self sparring over the last few months. And um, so that's never an issue, really. Um, so, yeah, I'm feeling very, very good. I had to fight. I did fight a self I think, before with the girl Minka uh, as a pro early on uh, in my pro career but obviously that was actually a day replacement as well so I didn't the, this is the first time where I actually have the proper South Bass Baron as a pro and um, and yeah I feel very in good shape but I'm ready to go um, but yeah nothing much has changed from training camp to training camp but just just the spar partners Perfect Cheers Katie Yeah thanks Gavin Okay we go to David from Radio France for your question please if you just pop yourself on mute, David. Okay, David, we'll come back to you shortly. Um, if we move on to Jim Condon next, please, for your question. Hi, Katie. Uh, Jim Condon here from Mars TV Radio Sport Ireland. Uh, Katie. Mm -hmm. Three years ago, I spoke to Clarissa Shields uh, on radio about the possibility of a dream fight between yourself and uh, Clarissa. And she told me that Katie will always take uh, care of business. She's the best of the best in the lower divisions and the lower weight classes. And I'll take care of the business in all of the top weight classes. But I'd love to see it happen, Clarissa said, but I can't see it happening. Is that something that you share the same sentiment? Um, I'd say so, Jim. I think uh, there's too much away discrepancy there. Uh, it would be the, the equivalent of Lomachenko getting in against Golovkin, for example. Um, so, uh, I mean, I can't really go above 142 pounds. I think uh, for a lot of people, it would be a fantasy fight, but I don't really feel like it will be uh, very realistic for that, that fight happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, there's there's plenty of fight fighters in and around the lightweight division who, who I'm actually focusing on, and, and that's it, really. Uh, cheers, Katie, and best of luck. We're all cheering for you. Thanks so much, Jim. Okay, I've got Jake Donovan from Boxing Scene, please. There we go. Thank you, Katie. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to ask, this is your third fight since the pandemic. Um, has there been any difference in training from your first fight, given there was so many delays in, uh, as compared to this camp where you've had sufficient time? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess there early on in the pandemic it was probably a bit trickier. The gyms were all a bit closed and um, it was harder to get sparring partners, for example, in the early stages of the, of the pandemic. But thankfully, where I'm based in Connecticut, um, it's, it has opened up there quite a bit over the last few months. Um, so it hasn't been that hard. We 
to be to, to get you know to get back into the gym again and to get the rounds. I was with the different sparring partners, so it has been quite easy over the last few months, I would say. Uh, but earlier on, it was definitely a, a lot trickier. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Katie. Always yeah. a pleasure. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we go to Wingy Boxing for your question, please, mate. Hello, Katie. How are you? Hi. How's it going? Not too bad. Not not too bad. How has the perception of women's boxing changed in your eyes since your first pro fight up until now? What what, what have you seen? The major changes that stick in your mind? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess when I was making my debut four or five years ago, uh, people really didn't uh, know much about women's boxing, for example. And um, um, I'd say it was just a bit, a bit up in the air in terms of uh, they didn't know whether, whether this was going to be um, if, if this was was going to be a re- the real deal or not. So uh, just looking over over the past few years and just seeing the, the barriers being broken and. Um, and in every single fight card right now, there's probably a, a huge female fight, and people are actually excited about these female fights now. Um, they're not getting laughed about about anymore. They're actually they're actually serious fights that people are actually interested in. And uh, I, I think we've, we 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 have made so much ground over the last few years. So it has been a great a great time to, to be involved in sport. I've only got one question, or Dan will tell me off, so I better go. But I'm going to yeah. ca- catch up with you uh, in the future at some point. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. Thank you, Katie. Thanks, Wingy. If we go to Andy Waters next, please. Hey, thanks, Dan. How you doing, Kiri? Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Thanks. Kiri, uh, Natasha has been quoted as saying, you know, she, she's stronger now, she hits harder now um, that she did, you know, nine years, nine years since, you know, on since your your Olympics fight. I mean, how, how have you changed? How has your style developed since then? Yeah, I think uh, we're both very, very different fighters now than, than we were back then. And that's why I can't really draw much from, from our last uh, fight in, in the Olympics. Um, we're both very, very different fighters now. And um, I say that uh, we're both have transformed into good good pro fighters. And, uh, you know, professional boxing is obviously so much different than, than amateur boxing. And uh, what works in the, in the pro game isn't going to work in the amateur game and vice versa. So we're, we're both very, very different. And... Um, but yeah, um, I'm looking forward to a great fight. I don't even think I answered that question. But... No, no, the, the, that's, that's 100%. It's just the yeah, I was going to ask you. Um, so far, tw- 2021, it hasn't been a great year for Irish boxing, you know, um, with Carl Frampton getting beat and Sean McComb and Paul Hayden and a couple of people, Paul Knight, um, Ando Kikachi as well. Um, can you get your thoughts on on Frampton, um, on, the, on the legacy that, that he left, leaves behind? I mean, you're a two-bit world champion yourself. He was going for three. It didn't happen, but still, a, you know, a, a terrific career that he had. Oh, yeah, an, an incredible career, a legendary career, really. Um, he's been in, in there against the best, never ducked any fighter. Um, he was obviously taking a big risk, stepping up and waiting in the first place and then and trying to be, become a three-way world champion, but uh, it just didn't happen for him. But what an amazing career, and he's leaving the sport as an absolute legend. Uh, so, you know, congratulations to him. He's he's had a phenomenal career. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Kitty. Best yeah. of luck. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. If you go to Ron Lewis next, please. Uh, Katie, hi there. Um, hi. Everyone says in women's boxing that Katie Taylor is the one that sets the bar for everyone else. Uh, who, who sets the bar for you and um, how do you keep pushing yourself on to higher and higher achievements? Um, I mean, I'd say this this generation of fighters have definitely achieved an awful lot, that's for sure, but... Uh, I was saying this earlier on, but that uh, we're also standing on the shoulders of, of many great fighters as well. The, the likes of Deirdre Goberty, who was actually a hero of mine, Jane Couch, uh, Leila Ali, uh, Lucia Riker, who's a phenomenal fighter, um, you know, Anne Wolf, uh, and Christy Martin, these kind of girls who have who actually paved the way for us as well. So um, I guess for me, I just want to continue to tear down the bar- those barriers and continue, continue to uh, make it easier for the next generation of fighters. Um, um, but I'm, I'm just so, so grateful for the fighters that went before me that actually paved the way for me to be in this position as well. Excellent. Cheers, Katie. Good luck, Sally. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. If we try David from Radio France again, please. Yes. Uh, hello, Katie. Hello, everyone. Hello. And, uh, sorry about my mic problem. <laughs> uh, you have already won everything among uh, amateurs and professionals. What else do you have to accomplish uh, besides defending your titles? 
And uh, have you ever thought about uh, retirement? Um, I don't think I'm thinking about retirement as of yet, but obviously I can't do this forever as well. I know that I have I, I only have a few years left in the sport, but uh, right now I feel feel very fresh and I feel uh, quite good. And um, I'm continuing. I, I obviously still love my job as well, and that's uh, that's what uh, what uh, motivates me. I still absolutely love this job. I still I'm still not tired of getting up in the mornings and doing the road doing the road runs, for for example. Um, but I just want to continue to improve. I want to obviously, I would be amazing to become a multiple weight undisputed champion if that's a possibility. And um, I just want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. And I just want to continue to uh, tear down those barriers. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, David. If we go to Sasha Jones, please, next. Hi, Katie. How are you? Yeah. Hi, Sasha. Um, obviously, you had a couple of close fights against Pursuit. Are you feeling any pressure for a standout performance against Tasha? Uh, no, I don't feel any pressure at all. I think um, uh, I look at those performances as, as great victories. And um, obviously, the first fight was was a lot closer. But um, I think I showed in the first fight that I have a, a lot of heart and a lot of great determination. And I came out um, with, a, with a grueling win. The second fight was obviously a lot more clear cut and a great performance. So I, I felt really, really good after that fight. And um, I, I don't feel under pressure at all, really. I, I, I guess there's pressure going into every, every fight uh, because I know that I, I'm aware that a lot of the times I am the favourite going into these fights. But, um, but that's a good thing as well. I think pressure is a privilege and I feel uh, privileged to be in the, in the position where I am uh, winning fights where my record as a fighter is a good one. And, um, and that's why that's why there is pressure because uh, it's a testimony that, that you're actually doing well in the ring. So I see it more as a privilege rather than a pressure. Thank you. Good luck at the weekend. Thank you. So I'm sure if you go to Danny Flexen from seconds out. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? Yeah, hi. Not too bad, Danny. Good, good. Um, I spoke to Tasha a few weeks ago and asked her if she felt your fight should be the main event of the show. And she said any fight involving Katie Taylor, regardless of the opponent, should be the main event, given your undisputed status. I just wanted to get your view on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm always open to being, to being the, the headline actor, I guess. But regardless of whether we're, we're headline or not, I think it, this fight could be the show of the, of the of the whole night, I think. It has the potential to be to be that kind of a fight. I know when we, when we fought twice as an amateur, they were both edge of the sea type of fights and uh, it could be the same on Saturday night as well but um, I, I'm just glad to be involved in a big big fight again regardless of whether it's a headline act or not I'm just happy to be involved in such a huge fight and um, and in, in, a, in a fight that people are really genuinely excited about so it's a great position to be in Thanks Katie, best of luck Yeah, thanks Danny Thanks Danny, if you go to Andrew Ryan next please Hi, Katie. Uh, Andrew Ryan with the Ripple People. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, Andrew. Good stuff. Um, you, you've spoken about, uh, you've reflected on how far women's boxing has come over the years since you've turned pro. But looking back on that fight with uh, Natasha at the Olympics and the and the atmosphere within the arena that day, um, do you think that that had any significance in demonstrating the potentially untapped appetite uh, for women's boxing at the time? Yeah, I think that was the first time that people were really seeing women's boxing on a global stage. And um, I think a lot of people are saying that fight between myself and Tasha was a fight of tournament, actually. And um, yeah, the atmosphere was obviously electric. Uh, I think we showed everything in that fight, the skill, the heart, uh, the, uh, the determination, everything that needed in, in, in a good match and in a good fight. So um, I think, yeah, for the first time in women's in the women's game, People have uh, seen women's boxing as, as, as absolute best. And uh, since then, women's boxing has gone on to 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 do so much over the years. And obviously, the, the pro game now is so, so strong because um, one of the reasons is because uh, for the first time in, in women's professional boxing, uh, these girls are coming into the pro game with so much amateur experience as well. They have that amateur background, and that's why you're seeing uh, everything in, in the pro game right now with, with regards to women's boxing. Thanks, Katie, and good luck at the weekend. The county's behind you. Thank you so much. Okay, we go to Owen Cowser next, please. 
Um, hey, Katie. Uh, I don't know what you see uh, last Sunday, but uh, reeling in the years was 2012. So the last five minutes of it, minutes uh -huh. of it was all about you. Um, like, do you ever have time to look back on what you've done or is it always about looking forwards? Um, I don't, I definitely don't tend to look back too often. Um, I am just, maybe I, that there will be a time for that when I actually retire from my, from the sport. But right now I'm just focused on what's, what's ahead and focus on, um, on these, these upcoming fights. Um, but yeah, it has been a, an incredible journey and, um, you know, from the amateur game to the pro game, um, it has been absolutely incredible more than I could have imagined really. So I am so, so grateful for the journey that I'm on. Right, thanks, Katie. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Okay, we'll go to Belfast Boxers, please. Conway. Hi, Katie. How's things? Hi, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. So, firstly, did you happen to see Natasha's contest with Terry Harbour? And secondly, what did you make of her performance? Um, I didn't see the the full fight, but I, I obviously seen clips of the fight, and um, yeah, fantastic fight. I think it was it was probably the fight of the year, in, in my opinion. Um, it was fantastic, and. Uh, um, both girls showed that so much will to win in that fight and the skill involved in the fight was incredible as well I know that um, Tasha had a kind of a rocky start to her pro career and I knew that at the start that she wasn't showing her best but definitely over her, the last couple of fights she has showed why she belongs here and um, it was just a, a great great fight I, I don't know who won the fight now it was obviously uh, called a draw but um, I, I'd love to see the re that rematch in, in sometime in the future myself Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank much you. best of luck for Saturday, Kitty. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Okay, so if we go to Steve Bilton from Boxing UK, please. Hi, Katie. It's Steve from Boxing UK. Hi, how's it going, Steve? Hi, Katie. Katie, just going back to the Clarissa fight, you said it wouldn't happen, but she proclaims herself as the greatest woman boxer of all time. Mm -hmm. Do you take personal issue with that? <laughs> um, I don't take it personal, personally at all actually um, I'm not really too hung, hung up on those things I'm just trying to be the best that I can be really and uh, I'd obviously love to, to be considered uh, the best pound for pound fighter in the world but that's all a matter of opinion as well so um, I'm not really too hung up on, on those things I just want to want to be the best that I can be and Clarissa is obviously a phenomenal fighter herself so uh, she's done so much for the game and um, and uh, yeah she's doing a great job Best look of the week, and Katie. Yeah, yes, thank you. Okay, guys, we've got time for a couple more. We've got Tasha in the waiting room. Um, Josh, apologies if I pronounce your surname wrong. Uh, Kesowitz. Kesowitz, yeah. Hey, Katie, how are you? Hi, how's it going, Josh? Good, thanks. Uh, I'll kind of follow up on, on that last question. Um, well, there's there's debate about whether you're pound for pound number one or Clarissa is, or maybe maybe even Amanda Serrano. Uh, among Amanda Serrano. Does that uh, does that motivate you at all? Does it when you're training or doing road work? Do you do you think about hey, I, I want to be number one pound for pound fighter? This is this motivates me. I don't know if you if you think about that, but um, is that something that motivates you? Being the potential to be number one pound for pound. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said before, I would love, obviously, love to be considered a pound for pound number one in the world. But I'm just trying to improve uh, my own box and ability. I, I just want to be the best that I can be. Like I said before, and I want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. And um, and so, yeah, I just want to go in. And it's important for me to go in and actually produce great performances each each and every time I step into the ring. And that's that's why I train hard. That's why I get up every morning and and do the road work. I want to show my absolute best every time I step into that ring. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and now for the final question. Just the apologies to anyone that hasn't had a chance yet, but um, unfortunately, we're on a bit of a tight schedule here with the full card. Um, but if we pass over to Ames from Boxing News TV, please. Ames here for Boxing News, dude. Pleasure to speak to you again, Katie. Yeah. Katie, I just wanted to get your perspective on uh, with the recent fight between Shannon Courtney and Ebony Bridges, there was a conversation about the way fighters should or should not promote a fight and themselves i want to know what your perspective was on that conversation um yeah i mean i i, I understand that there is uh, the fight was being portrayed in a certain way beforehand but i think both girls showed um absolute brilliance on, on fight night it was it ended up being a fantastic fight so that's all i'm concerned about really um, they showed the heart needed to show the grit and determination on, on actual on the actual fight and 
um, it ended up being a fantastic demonstration of women's boxing. So, um, regardless of what went but went on beforehand, the actual fight itself was absolutely brilliant. So that that's that's all I'm concerned about. Appreciate that, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Apologies. One more, David Mohan. Sorry, I've just seen your message in the chat. So if you're still there, please feel free to fire away. Yes. Yeah. Katie, I uh, saw comments, I think it was yesterday, from Joe Gallagher. Is he trying to maybe get under your skin by saying that you can be hurt in this fight? Or, or how do you take that? Um, I think, uh, I don't think anyone can really get under my skin, to be quite honest. I'm not that type of uh, of person to... Um, to to be offended in any way. I'm just, uh, you know, regardless of what's been said before the fight year, um, it's going to be settled on the action line uh, by the sweet science of boxing. It's not going to be settled by what's been said beforehand. So I just focus on the actual fight itself. Thanks,